It's Chanel here with another Sobit. Today we're talking about ruffles. How to make simple ruffles. I know there's a ruffle foot out there that everybody talks about and I don't, I don't think I've ever used it. Um, mainly because I don't really make a lot of ruffles. There was a time um, I was doing a lot of chili cook-offs and was making a lot of uh, aprons that had ruffles on it and stuff too. I probably would have liked that ruffle foot back then. But but it's actually really simple to just run two basting stitches along your fabric and then gathering them up and getting ruffles. So um, I've also taught a lot of my students how to do it and they do have little hang-ups on it and I think there's just one trick is just to get long stitches and not let the feed dogs hang up. Uh, making sure you have the right needle because if you don't, then the, you, your stitches won't be even. Um, and also just kind of slightly pulling the fabric in the back of your presser foot so that you get long stitches. You don't want to pull it too fast because then you break the needle. Um, but you just kind of have to help it out and you have to just smoothly sew it. Um, just in the, like back forth kind of just, it's just got to be an even speed. And then you get long stitches. So I'm going to show you how um, I got this to ruffle up. Okay, so I'm gonna I have my uh, ruffle fabric ready to uh, put the ruffle stitching in. I have a little uh, sample here that I hem the edge of it. Um, if you're making a ruffle that's got a hem on it, you really want to do the hem first because you don't want to do it after it's all gathered up like that. So what I'm gonna do is um, make two rows of stitching, and they are the I'm using the longest stitch on my machine, so it's the number. four four on my machine and I'm gonna sew within five eighths right here so I put my stitching guide at the five eighths line right here just to kind of keep me within it and I'm gonna start about a half an inch down from the end part here so that I have some thread room to grab um, and the trick is too, you really want to have long stitches so you want to kind of almost help the machine out by pulling the fabric a little just to, just a tad so that the feed dogs don't you know kind of pause a little bit and um, um, you just want to do you know no reverse stitching just two strips of thread um, of stitching lines and I'll start right here I'm just gonna pull I actually I'm pulling this thread right here just a little bit just to help it out and then I gotta grab the fabric right here so Again, I'm going to stop about a half an inch before the end also. Take that out, trim it, and then I have a nice long stitch. And a lot of times doing the contrast thread on the other side really helps too. Um, so that you can see it. Because this will all get enclosed into a seam um, if it's a ruffle there. So now I need to do another stitch right next to that one. And if I followed my presser foot guide here, like this is at 5 8 so I'm actually going to go... A little bit. I'm not going to follow the presser foot because then I'll be without it. You can actually go over the five eighths too. You just have to pull that basting stitch out once it gets into a seam. So I'm going to sew close to that seam. Start again, half an inch down. I'm going to kind of pull the fabric to get long stitches and stop at a half an inch past. Then I have two rows of stitching. Okay, so I got that stitched. Uh, remember to, if, if the ruffle calls to hem it first, you want to put that hem in first before you go and gather this up because then it's pretty hard to do. And the best way to do, like I did the contrast thread, I did a brown thread on the bobbin. The bobbin thread always seems to sew looser. So if you want to grab those two bobbin threads here, you grab the two at um, two at a time right there and then you just push you just like pull the thread and then push the the, um, the fabric down onto the thread and if it's a really long thing you want to do it from one side push it in the middle and the other side push it in the middle so then you'd have it even because if you just try to cram it all onto one side it gets kind of hard so we're just going to gather it up and then right here you just kind of um, proportion it out so that it's a nice proportion 
you don't want it all clumpy in one and then just a little bit in another. And then you have a nice, cute little ruffle. <laughs> and then what you do is then you sew it onto your piece of fabric, like right sides together. And then you would, you know, sew it uh, right, you know, like five eighths right there, right sides together. And then it rolls up and then there's your ruffle like that. So after you stitch it. Now I found a pattern that um, this one right here has a big ruffle across it and then the instructions here say to hem the edge first and this is actually like a curved shape and then here's the basting stitches right here you just put those basting stitches it says gather upper edge of front flounce between small circles so you'll have so it's kind of telling you um, that it's not all the way close to the edge right there but it's just two even rows of basting threads and then you pull them and then you gather them up and you set it in that way and that's how that ruffle gets in there. Another ruffle I really like to do is on chiffons. Um, I just think they make really pretty gatherings. Um, now this one I, I stitched with the same color front and back so I don't know which one is my bobbin thread. Um, sometimes you could tell by how loose it is but chiffons really ruffle up nice and I was like I'm going to start at this end and then to make it more even I'll also pull it from another end. That works really special if it's a long ruffle. You want to get a little bit you kind of meet in the middle. Pull from one end to the other. And then chiffons just make the nicest little ruffles. And also um, if you tear chiffon on the cross grain it'll have a little frayed edge. Like silk chiffons work beautifully with this. This is actually a poly chiffon and it frays a little more. Um, it would have a just a nice raw edge and it doesn't continue to fray so it's actually really nice little um, ruffles that you can set into seams and um, you can make them pretty small so this is how the chiffon ruffled would look here like that and it's just um, just a nice ruffle also you can do you can fold the fabric in half so you don't have a raw edge here and do the same and right here I actually put the brown as the bobbin thread and I pull that and then it looks like it's just a nice little ruffle and if it has a folded edge and not the raw edge it's also pretty cute too and then that just gets put into your seam and then you can have like a you know could put around a pocket or in a seam um, on a yoke right there and it just I think they're really cute little add-ons and I, I just love chiffon ruffles like that and it would look like that and you can make them really tiny too they can just be you know it's all the width that you put it also the measurement if let's say you're putting a ruffle in a 10 inch um, piece of fabric right here the math would be you want to cut the strip 20 inches um, it depends like most average ruffles are two times the length of what you're putting it in if you want it really ruffly and it's like chiffon you go two and a half to three times so you probably cut a 30 inch strip and then it just gathers all into there if you want just and it's sometimes a bulkier fabric too you don't want it as ruffly so and then you just you just proportion it out to get the ruffles you know look that you want and you just want it evenly balanced with you know when like a big chunk of gather ruffle and then nothing and then big chunk so that's all just moving those threads moving these threads right here and balancing it out so try some ruffles and they actually just the more again they're like the zippers the more you do <laughs> the better you get at it and I just make sure those long your stitches are long and even like a long stitch and there isn't any as soon as you have like a stitch that's real short and tight then it gets stopped the whole gather gets stopped so it's definitely a technique you got to learn a little bit but really easy and I think it's probably easier than a ruffle foot I don't know I should try those ruffle feet but I do a lot of things without having to get feet and stuff it's all the techniques that you learn so we'll try some ruffles I'll see you in the next so bit